you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Alicia and John rushed over to Anna's side, asking if she was alright. She responded groggily, I'm okay. Then she smiled at her son and said, I saw your grandfather's movements in your actions, John. He smiled back at his mother, so thankful that she survived the ordeal. Why don't you leave some of those fellas for me to put a hone on? The marshal uttered disappointingly as he walked into the cave. I was hoping it was going to be his mum. You see yeah. I mean, oh, why don't you let me kill some of these fuckers? Like, she pulls up a shotgun. <laughs> him yeah, yeah, yeah. John looked at him, smiling slightly. Everyone smiles very slightly yeah. in this book. Every... They're very stoic. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's because they're Native American. Yeah. They're very sombre people. Yeah. It's just the Indian way, Marshall. Please don't take it personal. <laughs> Kill like... everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like this one did. He pointed at the dead Persian lying in a pool of his own blood, staring blankly at the top of the cave. I kind of wish he'd just stop calling him Persian. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. like... There's something very funny about him. Yeah. 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 The Persian. Persian. It just sounds so funny. It really comes across as a way of them like convincing themselves that they're not racist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I'm not yeah. saying Arab. Yeah. He's Persian. Yeah. See, I understand. Yeah. I know there's a difference. Yeah. This depiction of a yeah. lunatic daddy <laughs> terrorist it can't be racist, can it? Jimmy Begay came into the cave behind the marshal and took a deep breath as he looked around at the bodies lying on the ground inside and outside the cave. <laughs> I love how every sentence, even the ones that don't go on like massively yeah. too long, they all go on like slightly yeah. too long. It's like they've discovered the science, the pure art of exactly when a sentence should end and, yeah, and just, just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jimmy, do you think the group down south will be up and running by now? John asked. Yeah, I think they're up by now. They are coordinating the attack on the big Satan at this get together. <laughs> <laughs> it's a barbecue, yeah. it's a jihadi barbecue. Yeah. It's when they go to the Grand Canyon. You know, it's just a nice little stuff up yeah. and have fun. If they get this running, they'll do a lot of damage to this country from west to east. Just like that. He snapped his fingers in time with his words. Just like that. Yeah, yeah, like that. Sorry, what did I yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jimmy explained what he knew of the plan and then what he thought they were going to do as part of it. He had made some notes on the specifics, which he wrote in a code he had invented in case he was discovered. They're going to blow up the Mall of America near Minneapolis tomorrow during the peak shopping hours. And they're going to hit the Statue of Liberty a short time <laughs> after the mall attack. Then they're going to do something at the Sears building in Chicago. This is heavy shit, man. Way too heavy for me. He produced a crucifix he was wearing under his shirt. They treat these things like vampires treat them. <laughs> Khan listened intently and then said resolutely, I have no choice but to trust someone back east to put this fire out before they eventually take down the whole frigging in civilized world. <laughs> Trouble is, with the folks we have calling the shots back there, we might just be pissing in the wind by letting them know. <laughs> it looks like a friggin' World War Three was fought here, the Marshal said loudly. I think it is actually the beginning of that, John said, convinced he was right after learning what he had learned from Jimmy Begay and Gatto. Who's this guy? <laughs> the Marshal nodded towards Gatto, <laughs> becoming aware that he was not what he appeared to be. Long story, Marshal, but he can be trusted, John assured him. He's a double agent. He can be yeah. trusted. <laughs> I gotta get my mother taken care of and kept in a safe place until I get back. He looked at Alicia, hoping she would step up and help, and she did. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's, that's how her role was gonna end in this week, just babysitting yeah. the mother. Yeah. Being a good homemaker yeah. and a wife. Yeah, she'll cook some food for her, <laughs> yeah. give her a blanket, all that sort yeah. of stuff. Have a baby, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take her to the hospital and stay with her there. If they don't keep her, where should we go that we'll be safe? To my place, Noche interjected quickly. These assholes don't know where I live. Hell, sometimes even I can't find it. <laughs> Here's the key. <laughs> That's the kind of friend you need. Yeah. I don't know where the <laughs> fuck I am half the time. Yeah. Take my keys. I think they're mine. I don't know. Who fucking knows. Emma, are you okay enough to walk to one of the cars? Alicia asked softly as she put her arm around the older woman. Wait a minute. I need to go get it. She realised the vehicle was still parked a bit of a distance out in the desert. It's going to take me just a few minutes. She nodded at Alicia, indicating she was feeling well enough to wait those few minutes. Alicia got the key, then took off running into the desert night towards the vehicle. Wait, it, this is not going to be a repeat of fucking Rigmarine. Is she about to get car bombed? Like, why she why is now, this... folks? <laughs> yeah. Why is this even happening? Why would she have to run off to get into a car? And switch on the engine. Why is this happening? Oh, no, Jay, he's put a potato up the exhaust pipe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I. Yeah, I mean, I can't. I honestly, yeah, I.
John kneeled down and put his arm around his mother. Are you sure you're okay, Mama? Please tell me if you're anything but that. <laughs> <laughs> he looked at her face closely and was glad that he killed the man who had injured her. Shh. I've got to finish this. I know that, John. You go and do what needs to be done, but go carefully. I can't lose you too. Please, John. She looked at him imploringly through watery eyes as he smiled back with a warmth that only she could put in his heart. But that warmth would soon be replaced by cold fury as he made ready for the biggest battle he had ever faced <laughs> at any time in his life. <laughs> Time's infinite. <laughs> he saw a phone lying on the ground a few feet from him, buzzing with an incoming call. He answered it with a short, yeah. It was Wilson, who said quickly, we're on our way to meet up with a Mexican contingent. We're getting the grand plan put into action. Your whole world is about to change, so get ready. Got that? John responded again with a simple, yeah, and ended the call. Within minutes, Alicia had the vehicle in front of the mouth of the cave. <laughs> yes, I, re I realised quickly there that it was just like, yeah, no, that was literally just not us setting up anything. No, she literally just, just went just, and got the car. Yeah, it's just for... I guess for more filler, isn't it? Yeah, the almighty word. <laughs> John assisted Amma into the back seat, which was a more comfortable place for her. Yeah, the back seat of a car is probably more comfortable than a cave. Than a yeah. cave. <laughs> yeah, you think so. He watched and waved as they pulled away from where he was standing, heading for what he hoped would be safer ground. So, I mean, now, I mean, we're right, we're right we at the end. We are right at the end. There's no way this is not going to be a cliffhanger ending because there's not yeah, enough time sure. left. Yeah, sure. They're not going to defeat time. the deep state. Exactly. That's wrong. <laughs> yeah. So the Shadow Wolves will have to live to fight another day. So really, right now, we need to start placing some bets, folks. Okay? Yeah. The questions are, right, are we going to get a big fucking fiery showdown now between Wilson and John? I'm guessing we are. I imagine Surely we will, yeah. I think, I think Wilson is more like just the villain of this novel rather than yeah. a villain of the yeah. whole thing. Don't forget Obama. Are we going to get a reveal on the traitor? Is Alicia going to survive? Yeah, that's a good question. I guess there's only one way to find out the answer to any of these questions, really, isn't there? Yeah. That's by phoning Steven Seagal. <laughs> yes. And asking him. <laughs> yeah, the only way is to raise a drink, smile, and walk backwards into hell. <laughs> 28. The Saudi White House Jihadist Plan. <laughs> Oh, God. The convoy of vehicles rolling through the desert from the south moved along under the cover of night with the precision of the military unit it was. <laughs> with the precision of itself. Yeah. With its own <laughs> A military unit led by a radical jihadist <laughs> composed of a mixture of well-trained Islamists and cold-blooded cartoleros. <laughs> In the lead vehicle, Ali Malouf dialed his phone, trying to reach Wilson. He was on fire with anticipation of the coming events, which he felt would change history itself, bring down the great Satan, and raising the black flag of jihad, dealing a death blow not only to America, but also to Western culture itself. <laughs> What? Why would that happen? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like America gets fucked over, and what, suddenly Britain, France, yeah, and Germany... Oh, well, we just was... rescind our culture. <laughs> we all convert to yeah, Islam yeah. Uh, and become members of yeah, a great cartel. <laughs> yeah. what? We convert to Islam and yeah. join Mexican drug cartels. <laughs> As this unfolds, Ultimately culminating in a pulse bomb attack, the Americans will be fighting one another in the streets for food, killing one another out of desperation, doing the job for us. He felt an inner smile brought on by a sense of an impending victory on a scale never before seen. What is happening? A pulse, pulse bomb attack. I don't know what that is. I don't know what it is, but I'm here for it. <laughs> John was outside the cave talking with Marshal Khan about what they should do to try and prevent the attacks that were already rolling their way. According to what I'm hearing from Jimmy Begay, the plan is to attack our cultural icons across this country, suddenly and synchronised. Must be the Confederate statues. Yeah. I don't have a good feeling about just how deep this thing has gone in our ranks. My sense is that there is an awful lot of money being passed around to quite a few people in high places. People? Like who? Everyone this president has brought in. <laughs> And the other problem, John, I don't have a clue as to who might be on the take here in Arizona. I know who's on the take. <laughs> yeah, I know one person. I know person. one guy. I'm fucking <laughs> sure. You mean, there's no one you can go to with this? John was getting hit by something he already knew, but didn't want to admit was as real as it was turning out to be. <laughs> they've covered this. Uh, and it's, it's basically the only conversation they've ever yeah. had as a group. 
Fuck me. Before he could stop himself, John blurted, I don't know how you can work for these people. What people? Khan regarded the big lawman, a bit startled by his outburst. <laughs> you know what and who I'm talking about. The president and his hand <laughs> puppet attorney general. <laughs> My god is that all of this comes right back to them, lying right at their feet. Khan stood in cold silence. I don't work for them. Then who is it you work for, Marshal? They have seated the government with Muslim Brotherhood <laughs> members who hate our country. <laughs> Is he gonna say, I work for the people of this Yeah, family. guaranteed. I work for the founding fathers and the Constitution. This president has opened the borders and everybody and his uncle have flooded in. We don't know who or where they are. We've lost control, and that's exactly what he wanted. But again, I thought the whole point of like loving America was this love of freedom and the big, you know, the open road. <laughs> the wild the, country. The, the trailblazers, <laughs> the wild lands. We can't even keep a track on it exactly where right. everyone is at any given time. It's, yeah. I didn't think you wanted to. I thought that was the point. Yeah. We can't even cover the open prairie. Yeah. <laughs> Endless miles of urban sprawl. Gone is the America that I knew. <laughs> John couldn't stop his tirade. This great half-white father who lives in DC has released people from Gitmo who went right back into the battlefield killing my brothers in arms this very day. Actually just referred to Obama as half-white. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? He lets those heartless scumbags out of Gitmo to kill more of our soldiers. For what? He traded them for one soldier who deserted his post and got people who thought he had been taken by the enemy killed trying to find and rescue him. Marshal Khan reacted angrily. The country, John. I work for the country. <laughs> it doesn't matter whose ass is planted in the Oval Office. They come and go. The country remains. <laughs> the big lawman paused for a moment. His trust in Khan had not waned, but he could not truly understand how anyone of integrity could rationalise a way to continue to be part of the government during that time frame. I mean, you're a cop. <laughs> you, you, you work yeah. for the same fucking people. That's you. You're him. Like, yeah. And the fact that they support Trump. Yeah. You really yeah, yeah, can't yeah, yeah. think of how yeah. my, someone might rationalise yeah. their support for someone who's actually the villain. Hmm. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Looking left, the big lawman tried to walk his way to a place of understanding. The more he thought, the more frustrated he became. How could this be happening here in the United States? Had everything he held in his personal beliefs been knocked to the ground while he just stood by watching? He did not remember seeing anything quite like that, and yet here it was actually happening. There he stood in the darkness of the Arizona desert, feeling helpless to prevent what he knew was going to befall the country within the coming hours. Nowhere to turn. No one who held the national trust, who could be absolutely counted on without doubt. It was absolutely mind-blowing. <laughs> Marshall, the only thing I can say is, I think you should trust your gut on this. <laughs> John said somberly. There is literally one conversation in this book and yeah. it's just been had about 50 times. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Let someone know who you feel can initiate something to stop what's coming. Don't see any other way on this. John trusted the system less than anyone he knew. What? <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> He's, He's a cop. He's literally a foot soldier for yes. these very people. Yeah. You're one of the most indoctrinated, yeah. brainwashed people among all. Any yeah. of us. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna pull the pin that could easily get out of control and come back to have dire consequences and seriously bite all of us in the ass. <laughs> Marshal Khan said resignedly. Serious consequences? For who? John asked. For the ultimate and only tyranny failsafe net we have in this country. I really wish he'd stop with the inverted commas. They're, <laughs> yeah. just, they're so distracting. Completely like, random. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> there is a group of command officers within the military and in other places, people who guard us as a nation and who, for the last five years or so, have been doing things under the radar to try to protect us from the enemy within. Q. He's gonna get in touch with Q. <laughs> this is the thing as well, this is like a perfect encapsulation of exactly like the problem with this kind of conspiracy theory bullshit. Is that's the whole point right there, that's the actual conspiracy theory, is there are some good people in the, mi yes, in the yeah, military yes, industrial yes, complex yeah. that are actually fighting on our side. Yeah. That's, that's the actual yeah, yeah. madness of yes, the theory. Because the fact that's is, the point no, there ain't. Is it's supposed to be a placating, pacifying belief system. Yeah. Don't yeah. worry. You sit yeah. back. 
there are people yeah. inside and they'll and work and they'll get it Okay, sold. that's why Trump is going to save us all. Exactly. Like Boris Johnson exactly. is going to save us all. Brexit yep. is going to save because us all. all. Because it means I don't have to fucking yep. do or think anything. Yep. Yep. I can just be a cop who goes around yep. busting heads, arresting yep. minorities disproportionately, yep. shooting people in the back. And don't worry, even though I know this is all bullshit, someone else will figure yep. it out. Okay, I'm rolling the dice here, I'm putting a bet forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's a sad one, unfortunately. Yeah, I think I know what you're going to say. I'm, I think I'm feeling the same way. I think nothing more is going to happen in this book and it's going to end on a nothing. Like, it's going to be a cliffhanger, yeah. sort of. It'll be sequel bait, yeah. but I don't think it'll be anything even vaguely interesting. I think the rest of this is just going to be people going, meh, meh, America, conspiracy theories, meh, and that'll be it. Yeah. I still, again, like, you, you had the pessimist approach before, mm. I had the optimist approach. Ultimately, yeah. I was right. Yeah. So I, I am hoping... Open against hope. That's fair. Right now that we are going to get the ending that we deserve. No, that's fair. Khan was feeling a bit better about his decision to let John in on this secret group. This is not a simple troop of Boy Scouts. There are people who, if they were found out and properly prosecuted, would be hung for treason. And I use the word treason because it is in the same spirit of the treasonous acts <laughs> performed by our patriots during the Revolutionary War. <laughs> so they they are now arguing for treason. Yes, they're saying that you should commit. Treason, treason, yeah. To overthrow the government. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't disagree with that. <laughs> no, but they're fascists. <laughs> yes, but yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah, these right, guys. Yeah. Eric Kahn was a sterling guardian of secrets, <laughs> and relating this one did not rest easy with him. At that moment in time, he was betting everything he had on the belief that John was the man he thought he was, and hoping he was right for doing so. For he knew beyond a doubt that what he did next, and whom he did it with, could have dire consequences. There were no other options. I fucking well know you told me about seven fucking times. Uh, Fuck off. Told me very slowly over the course <laughs> of 200 pages. John said quietly, I think you ought to know that my mother's a full-blooded mohawk and her ancestors had a little bit of skin in that war in those days too. Khan acknowledged John's proud comment and then said resolutely, I won't tell you any names of the members of this group. He dropped his eyes, then looked back up at John, who was four inches taller than him. <laughs> Khan was muscular all the way up to his neck. <laughs> really tiny head. Yeah. Here we go. Khan was muscular all the way up to his neck, and that gave him the appearance of a weightlifter. His shaved head topped off a look of fierceness you don't see in many others. So what's that, sorry? Shaved head. Mm -hmm. Can I just uh, get a look at um, the picture of uh, former U.S. Uh, Deputy <laughs> Marshal Tom Morrissey on the back of this very book? It's <laughs> actually both of them. There's do now inserts. a conversation There's... between two separate author inserts. So they're both just saying the same thing <laughs> yeah. over and over again yeah. in circles. <laughs> oh my. God. He was a former soldier and a current lawman, down to his toes. He smiled and turned into the night as he dialed his phone. You better get yourselves ready for the next adventure. Fuck. <laughs> you were not prepared for the no, next adventure. Not, no. <laughs> he handed the phone to the big lawman and nodded as indication that he should speak. What followed was an accounting of everything he could recall from the reporter's recorded notes, the story he had been told by Jimmy Begay, and what Gato said on what information he could talk about. The man on the other end quietly asked to speak with Jimmy and Gato, so the phone went back to Marshal Khan as John went to find Jimmy and Gato. <laughs> he relayed most of what he had already told John and then handed the phone back to the Marshal, who handed it to Jimmy, saying, Here, talk to this man. This is fucking bizarre, isn't it? Like, this this yeah, is unreal. This is just shit. Yeah. <laughs> Noche asked in his usual stoic manner, I wonder who it is that's going to clean up this mess. But whoever has to come to the crime scene and do the clean-up is going to have a pretty nauseating job on their hands, Noche commented. Looks like two of them messed their pants. Great observation, Noche. John paused for a moment. I think we had better bring Armando into this. What, because there's shit in some of their pants? <laughs> Get him to clean the shit. Yeah. <laughs> he looked at Khan and asked, Marshal? I need you to call him and say that you needed us and asked us for assistance because you didn't have time to do anything else. I can do that. Where do I go with it if he starts wanting a lot of detail? Don't read shit and <laughs> Perky got the f 
Perky got on the phone and told John, I got a call from Bellamy asking for a 10-7 on Alicia. He said his sister, who's a nurse at the Chandler Hospital, thought she saw her pushing some older woman in a wheelchair into the emergency room. She said she couldn't find them when she got back to her station, but wanted to offer help if she needed it. What did you tell him? John asked. Told him he should call you. What did he say then? He said that he didn't want to get you upset, it being your mother and all. Thanks, Perky. We'll probably call soon. I got it. Thanks, Perky. You're the best friend a boy could have. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Bellamy went to the hospital where Amma Gooday had been taken by Alicia. While driving there, he was on the phone with Special Agent Douglas Wilson. We told him... <laughs> oh, Bellamy, I said from the go. start, yeah. didn't I? Yeah. Didn't I say that? So yeah, I'm going to be yeah. clever more than I see this again. So fuck, Alicia's going to get... I think so, yeah. I think this is, yeah, yeah. She's going to have to stab him 63 times uh. in the face and neck in accordance with the old way. <laughs> <laughs> While driving there, he was on the phone with Special Agent Douglas Wilson, who told him, I want you to get to the old woman and put her lights out <laughs> and find a way to do the same to Good A's girlfriend. <laughs> I you got love, that, Bellamy? I love the way it's like, you know, there's no way he'd see this one yeah, coming. Yeah, yeah. And like, the, literally the moment yeah. Bellamy got introduced, the first thing <laughs> yeah. he was like, yeah, he's, yeah, he's uh, the one. double agent, yeah. he's working with it. We just instantly yeah. saw through it. Oh my god. Then I want you to call Good A and tell him that his mother and lady were killed and you think it was done by the cartel. Yeah? Bellamy wondered where he was going with this. I want that son of a bitch so messed up that he comes out of his skin and does something stupid. Insanely stupid. <laughs> Bellamy. Fucking knew it was Bellamy. Bell and Bellamy, like yeah, he says. exactly. <laughs> And he's white, so it's got to be him, isn't it? Yeah. He's allowed to be a traitor. Yeah, exactly. He's allowed to be a traitor because he's a white guy. The shadow wolves are untouchable. The yeah, shadow wolves exactly, must yeah, remain yeah. pure. Exactly. <laughs> 50 miles south of Phoenix, the Islamic Jihad Mexican cartel caravan <laughs> arrived. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> fucking what a line. What a line. 50 miles south of Phoenix, the Islamic <laughs> Jihad Mexican... I just want to say Jihad... Jihad Mexican? Jihad hyphen Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Islamic Jihad Mexican culture. I mean, it's, it sounds like a fucking like takeaway that's going to open around the country. Oh, the Jihad Mexican like, <laughs> fusion <laughs> cuisine. Like. <laughs> 50 miles south of Phoenix, the Islamic Jihad Mexican cartel caravan arrived at the place where they were to have their ceremonial <laughs> celebration. It was the last night before what they planned to be the beginning of the end of Western civilization and the rise of the Islamic World Caliphate. The cartel crew began assembling the encampment while Ali Malouf used his satellite phone to pass on the confirmation that they were readying for the attack on the Grand Canyon. Well, what are they going to do? Are they going to blow up the Grand Canyon? <laughs> yeah, people seem to like how big it is. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to make it a bit bigger. <laughs> We're gonna fill in the Grand Canyon. <laughs> destroying all American culture. The air was filled with promise for him in one sense and with dread in another. He knew that only wounding a king was not the way to defeat him. The only option is to kill the king. And the king, in the eyes of the entire world, was the United States. <laughs> what a great metaphor. <laughs> I especially like the bit where you just literally spell it out. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> As the generators began their purr, the lights broke through the desert night, creating shadows on the cacti and bushes that surrounded them. <laughs> the way of the shadow cacti. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly he realised he had not heard from the man he had sent north to the cave with weapons and ammunition. It troubled him that he had not heard from the young man, about whom he had questions. Not serious enough to take him out of the strategic threat of what he was about to do, but troubling enough to want to keep him closer than he had done by sending him north to the cave. Fuck me. <laughs> How long is that sentence? <laughs> Part of the fantasy that is established within the fiction of this book is a world free of all ambiguity yeah. and nuance. <laughs> Hence that use of language. He pulled his phone from his pocket and dialed Jimmy's number. The phone buzzed in Jimmy Begay's pocket. Uh-oh. He commented <laughs> automatically after seeing who it was. <laughs> Uh -oh, uh -oh, that was Maloof, and I get the feeling that he senses something is heading his way. He's a freaky guy. <laughs> he's right about something heading his way. Just hope he's not ready for it, John said quietly. Something like... Jimmy was trying to coax out of him something he was hearing in his head. John said it. Hell is headed his way. <laughs> because we're coming. <laughs> And hell is coming with us. <laughs> what the fuck? Same. I'm not making that up. That is actually what. Now, see, this is why we love Sigalda. I mean, I know how frustrating yeah. it is. But how brilliant how is that? How incredible is that? Like, nice. listen to this. Listen to this. He's right. Right about something heading his way. Something like hell is heading his way. Because we're coming. 
and hell is coming with us. <laughs> it's just amazing. It's Fucking the most hell. inept way yeah, possible yeah, of doing that. Yeah. We mentioned Garth Marenghi earlier yeah, on. Yeah. This is this straight is, yeah. up fucking Garth yeah. Marenghi levels of yeah. self-parody and yet it's completely <laughs> fucking serious. Yeah. Jimmy chuckled and commented, ain't that a line from that movie about Wyatt Earp? None other, Marshall Khan interjected. None other. He tapped Jimmy on the shoulder and went on, seems like you know your movies. I'm sorry, what? Hell is heading his way because we're coming and hell is coming with us. Is that <laughs> not a line from a film? You tell him I'm coming and hell's coming with me, you hear? Hell's coming with me! Seems like you know your movies. <laughs> yeah, I do. Khan cautioned, but don't you go thinking that this is some sort of movie plot, okay? No, I understand that. But you know how Hollywood can always take something bad and make it worse. John said, this is badder than worse. <laughs> So let's not get caught up in that shit! <laughs> let's get going. As he walked towards his vehicle, he noticed Marshal Khan on the phone, with his left hand waving in an expression of what he was saying over the phone. <laughs> he was saying certain words, but John couldn't weave them into coherency. <laughs> You know, I, <laughs> I know how you I feel. Just fucking <laughs> what he did get made no sense, but then, what about this moment did? They loaded up into their vehicle convoy and headed south, in the middle of the Arizona desert, on the blackest of nights, with not one of them knowing if they would live to see the sunrise. That was a weird thing with the conversation. It was, oh, wasn't what it? What the hell's going on there, hey? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bellamy entered the hospital from a side door and walked quickly towards the emergency room, arriving just as Amma, slumped in the wheelchair, was being taken into the treatment area. He dropped into a chair and picked up a newspaper that was sitting on a seat next to him. Hiding behind the open paper, he observed Alicia going in with her, and a few minutes later coming back out with her phone to her ear, walking toward the hospital security office. He got up and followed an orderly into a storage closet. Locking the door, he raised his weapon that was already sporting a silencer and fired, instantly killing the unsuspecting. <laughs> Expecting man. <laughs> this Jesus this God. is proper like a cigar movie. Yeah, this right is now. literally the movie where he goes gets put into a cone and wakes up with a fake beard. Yeah, 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 and yeah. It's, it's, it's not even it's a goatee, isn't it? It's like yeah. because there's, there's yeah. a nurse <laughs> that's been shaving it and she's like she's fallen in love with him. Yeah, with I think she actually doesn't thing. she kind of sexually assault um, him while he's unconscious. Yes, she does. And then basically he comes out of his coma and they fall in love and well, I say fall in love. She's in love with him. You know, you can't have too much security. take long before he had his target in sight. He moved to her bedside swiftly and pulled the curtain around the injured woman's bed. Can you get me some water? She asked weakly. <laughs> you won't be needing that or anything. <laughs> his words were interrupted as the curtain was pulled open by a nurse. What are you doing here? She asked as he signalled her with a finger to his lips to be quiet and closed the curtain once again. <laughs> Pointing the gun at her, he said, Shut your mouth and nobody gets hurt, okay? She nodded yes. He put the weapon to the back of the nurse's head and prepared to take his shot. But before he could finish, she fainted, falling to the floor and dropping the tray she was holding. <laughs> a voice cried out, What happened? A staff started rushing toward the area. It's a good hitman, this one, yeah. yeah. With the curtain being drawn back, Bellamy stated loudly, She just fainted! As he began to walk out of the room with the gun tucked into his shirt. A fatal mistake. Alicia arrived with her weapon in hand and a security officer beside her. What are you doing here, Belle? She demanded when she saw the look of terror on Amma's face as she pointed at the rogue task force member with trembling fingers. <laughs> his scrub shirt fell open as he drew his weapon. The silencer raised up in her direction, and immediately everything fell into place. Two quick rounds from Alicia's Sig Sauer put an end to the Judas in their ranks as he <laughs> fell dead at her feet. Well, we, we got, like, sort of what we wanted, but that, again, Yeah, it was, was a really shitty moment. so yeah. effortlessly overcome. He goes in, yeah, like, yeah, and all just fucks just everything up and gets killed. Kills yeah. some random innocent yeah. unrelated person. <laughs> like, for fuck's sake. 29. Ghost. 
On the strip in Las Vegas were three separate groups of well-trained jihadists poised in hotel rooms ready to strike three casinos at the same time with explosives and automatic rifles. A team of crack cud trained jihadists was in position near the glass bridge of the Grand Canyon with rocket launchers that were primed and ready to demolish that structure beyond repair. At the same time, a large truck was parked on Cadman Plaza are in Brooklyn, New York, less than one mile from the Brooklyn Bridge. <gasps> it's true allegiance. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is true yeah, yeah. Fuck me. <laughs> so is true allegiance a kind of spin-off of this? Yeah, like it's a sequel. Two men were sitting in it, ready for the signal to drive onto the bridge and stop in the middle of the span. They were to take a motor scooter from the cargo bay and speed off toward Manhattan, where they would remotely detonate the deadly cache of explosives in the truck, effectively taking down the middle of that bridge. <laughs> Sake. At the Mall of America, a truck was parked in the lot outside the main entrance, loaded with explosives and ready to be driven through the doors into the middle of the structure, to be blasted into the mind and spirit of middle America. <laughs> On a powerboat docked at a pier in Red Hook, Brooklyn, were three jihadists with rocket launchers <laughs> ready to set sail toward the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> they can to... <laughs> shoot it with rocket launchers! <laughs> oh my god. Ready to do it some serious damage from the water, then hightail it for New Jersey and abandon the boat, booby trapped with high explosives. At the New York Stock Exchange, there were a dozen suicide vests hidden by by some on the janitorial staff who had come into the United States as refugees from Syria and at the mayor's insistence were hired instead of the veterans who were originally promised the jobs. That oh up. my <laughs> fucking God! Could you get any more fucking perfect yeah. to pass oh, yeah, that yeah, fucking yeah. right wing yeah. bullshit? It was all in place. The devastation would begin in Las Vegas and like a wave sweep across the country. Ali Malouf thought, what fools these Americans are. <laughs> they brought upon themselves their own destruction by their naive concept of justice and fairness. True justice will be ours. Fairness will go the way of their other weaknesses. Their tents were up and the activities were beginning. <laughs> Stop doing an assault course and riding their BMXs up and down. They're gonna have a barbecue later yeah. and then it's the disco. <laughs> The tents were up and the activities were beginning as a group of women arrived and began moving through the encampment, kissing any man who came into their path. What? You heard me, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Middle Eastern music was blaring through the speakers placed throughout the encampment and the smell of hashish filled the air. There was dancing and festivities as the moment of truth approached. Ali Malouf felt that this was the night of change. So many of his brothers had died to bring about, and he had the supreme honour of being part of bringing this change. That's <laughs> like the moment of truth, the night of change. He's going to bring this change to the West. What filled his heart was the knowledge that there were believers in elected offices in America who were part of this change. Brothers who were elected through the greed and stupidity of the American electorate. What a moment in time. What a great irony, he thought. <laughs> there were brothers entrenched around America as lawyers, dentists, bankers, doctors, and in the media in control positions. Wilson showed as the merriment was in full swing. He found Ali and embraced him warmly. Oh, for fuck's sake. I'm going to miss working with you, Ali. This has been quite an experience. He looked around at the celebration. This world will never be the same. That's true, Douglas. Oh, so true, came Ali's response, which startled Wilson. His first name was never used by people with whom he interacted, with the exception of Mandrell. Uh... That true. You really got a hard on for this man, he emphasized after a pause. Don't let it distort your judgment, Douglas. That's true, Douglas, came Ali's response, which startled Wilson. His first name was never used by people with whom he interacted. Don't let it distort your judgment, Douglas, which startled Wilson. His first name was never used by people with whom he interacted. <laughs> This set the rogue agent to quickly revisiting his prior conversations with the principal jihadist. I want the to be out. Principal ad jihadist. <laughs> He's the head of a jihadist school. <laughs> the jihadist. It's like an anime about jihadists. <laughs> <laughs> my jihadist academia. Yeah. Where is the key code for my money? Wilson asked. 
I have it right here in my pocket, Special Agent Wilson. Or should I say, such a Special Agent Wilson. Aloof <laughs> chuckled maliciously. Okay, is he gonna kill him or fuck him? I'm not, I'm not sure at the moment. One and the other. <laughs> I'm just wondering which order is he. Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? Wilson asked, slightly annoyed. Nothing more than the fact that you will always be special to me. Ali patted Wilson on the arm as he spoke. I'm only jesting, my friend. Here. He handed the agent a small replica of a crescent moon. <laughs> well, he didn't hand him an actual crescent moon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a replica. Was it? Oh, okay. <laughs> it wasn't the, mo the actual moon. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. This is the key you will present to the bank in Dubai. He took Wilson by the arm. Come and join our celebration. <laughs> he walked in toward a group who was toasting the night. Some waving their arms like hippies at a rock concert. Waving his arms like Michael Gove at a side run. <laughs> As he approached them, Wilson thought, I wonder when they're going to pull out their cigarette lighters and hold them over their heads as they begin to dig the scene. He chuckled to himself because what he was watching firmed his conviction that the hippie culture was the easiest lead. That is hilarious. <laughs> that is hilarious. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. right wing fucking chunder boys who think that fucking QAnon and all of this shit. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's the hippies that are the most easily led even though yeah. they're the ones saying no, no, all of this society is yeah. wrong and we need to drag it all down and we need to rethink yeah. and change it. No, they're the most easily led, not you lot who just believe whatever you're told by fascists yeah. and Joe up higher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He wondered if some of these people were just looking to party anytime, anywhere, like deadheads. They had no idea they were being silently surrounded by John Goodday, <laughs> US Marshal Eric Khan, and a sizable contingent of shadow wolves. <laughs> With a plan beginning to form, the lawmen knew that they could put down the plan to blow up the casino and hotel, but they needed hard intelligence on the entire plan of destruction in the most detail possible in order to stop the attacks that were about to happen. John felt instinctively that the person or persons who could give up where all of the attacks were to take place was somewhere in this encampment. John peered into the darkness with more than his eyes. He blended into the night silently and without hesitation, moving toward a position he was being drawn to by his instincts and something else. The marshal sat poised and ready for just about anything. With an alertness learned through his experience in Iraq and <laughs> Afghanistan, black ops, John moved like a spirit toward and behind the prone figure who was observing a span in front of him that somehow did not include John Gooday. It wasn't until he felt the blinding pain of his throat being sliced did his observation end. <laughs> John pushed the dying man's face into the ground, stifling his last gasps. The big lawman returned to where Khan was positioned and led him and the wolf pack past the dead sentry, directing them to fan out in a line ready to assault the unsuspecting reveler terrorists. Khan pointed toward two men who were in deep conversation near a raging fire. They were slapping one another on the back and at times laughing loudly. <laughs> John's eyes narrowed with fury as he said quietly, Son of a bitch. That son of a bitch. <laughs> that blood-haired prick right there, Special Agent Wilson. Well, I'll be a donkey's ass. That motherless prick came to me last year wanting his men deputized to expand their jurisdiction in the Fast and Furious investigation. First time he came by, I couldn't give him an answer. Then he came back a week or so later and identified himself as being part of a unit with DHS. So secret that even most of that agency didn't know they existed. Like, they're literally like crawling towards them in the middle yeah, of the yeah, yeah, trying yeah, to make yeah. And he's just like yeah, that, having this yeah. fun. John's just like, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this was the style. Of the style. <laughs> so I tied an onion to my boot, which was the style at the time. Now, to take the ferry cost a nickel, and in those days, nickels had pictures of bumblebees on them. Give me five bees for a quarter, you'd say. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah. The important thing was that I had an onion on my belt which was a style at the time. They didn't have white onions because of the war. The only thing you could get was those big yellow ones. I suggest we try taking both of those two alive, Khan said with growing intensity. Unim Fuck that, said John. <laughs> and immediately opened fire, killing a local child. Yeah. 
They moved closer and closer, looking for the most opportune moment to strike. And strike they did, taking out the two hooded guards who were standing <laughs> in the drawer. Why were they hooded? <laughs> 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 hooded robes. <laughs> <laughs> Catholic <laughs> priests. <laughs> yeah, this, they've got druids now yeah. working <laughs> with the Islamic terrorists. The jihadi druids. <laughs> <laughs> and they did strike, taking out the two hooded guards who were standing near the truck holding those who were about to die. Two silent shots dropped both men like drapes, which caused one of the women nearby to start screaming. Shots rang out almost instantly from several other hooded guards who came running toward the truck. They went down quickly as the shadow wolves began spraying out throughout the complex, firing their weapons. John and the marshal moved rapidly towards Ali Maloof and Douglas Wilson, who turned and ran toward the edge of the encampment. In an instant, John was on Wilson, knocking him to the ground and kicking the gun that the downed agent had grabbed out of his hand as he rolled away. <laughs> Oh he grabbed it out god. of his own head. Oh my god. Fuck me. His agility as he sprang back to his feet surprised Khan, who lunged at him without realizing that he was leaping on a man who was holding a razor sharp knife in his hand, awaiting the marshal's body. It caught him in the heart, instantly killing him. <laughs> Oh shit! Oh, I didn't expect that. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck. Well, R.I.P. Khan, we hardly knew you. John grabbed Wilson's wrist and flipped him backward, ripping his shoulder apart as he flew through the air and landed hard on the ground. Listen to me, Geronimo, Wilson warned with a face full of pain. You think you've got a chance to win this one? But you are so far from reality, it's amazing to me that you are standing here at this moment, you piece of ignorant garbage. But you won't be standing long now. He started to pull another gun from his pocket as he spoke, but John's weapon pull was much faster as he drew a bead on the the rogue agent. You drop that, Wilson, or two things are gonna happen. John centered himself as he spoke. First, you're gonna hear a loud crack. <laughs> then you're not gonna hear anything ever again. Oh. He waited for Wilson's reaction. He looked up at John and shrugged as he said, Okay, you got me. Here. He brought the weapon down, pointing it at the ground like he was surrendering, then stopped. You know something, Godet? You have the same look on your face that your friend Sunday had when I put one through his head. He had no idea what was coming, and neither do you. He twirled the gun in his hand, gripping it, and starting to squeeze the trigger. John put a round right between his eyes. <laughs> Classic cigar yeah, fucking yeah. moment. <laughs> effortlessly yeah, killed him yet again. Yeah. Again, that's the thing in it, is that when you have these films where it's just he effortlessly kills, effortlessly kills, effortlessly and then as he gets higher and higher up, yeah. he's still just effortlessly yeah, killing. He never him. changes. And there's just no there's no resistance, there's no, there's no tension, like, there's yeah, you nothing. You compare it to like Die Hard, which is like yeah, the movie yeah, of yeah, the protagonist yeah. just getting the shit yeah. beaten out of him right to the end. And it's like that's why that movie is so highly regarded, because the tension and like the legitimate feel that he's fighting for his life yeah. against, you know, such overwhelming odds. It, he's not special forces, no. he's not fucking he's black not, ops, he's yeah. not a shadow wolf. Yeah. He's not a magic Native American. Yeah. He's just Bruce Willis. I don't know if I've ever seen Steven Seagal even take a punch in a film. <laughs> yeah, it, because he just it does not. He just very, goes, very, very, very rarely happens and kills everyone. Yeah, his, his ego kicks him in the balls to death, or <laughs> punches him in the chest to death, or yeah. whatever the fuck. Shoots a helicopter out. Yeah. Of his <laughs> Makes a shotgun out of pipes he just pulled from the wall. Big lawman watched him fall, then moved quickly to Marshal Khan's body and saw he was gone. He said a short prayer for this man, whom he'd only known for a short time, but it ignited a strong feeling of trust in him. <laughs>
<laughs> After a few seconds, he surveyed the area where he had seen the other man run into the intense darkness. He took Eric Kahn's phone from the dead man's pocket and moved like the dark animal he had become, depending on his acute senses and the something else that seemed to be guiding him. He struggled to find the other man as the sounds of screams, gunfire, and confusion rained behind him. His weight wasn't long, as he had to dodge a slicing swipe from a crescent blade. What a scepter. <laughs> yeah. John rolled in a manner he had learned in Aikido. <laughs> <laughs> Straight onto the blade. Yeah. Straight the I thought we was going to say in Ikea. <laughs> it was a rough neighbourhood, yeah. but it was Ikea. Well. Another swipe came dangerously close to his head as he rolled away once more. Infidel, please give my regards to Allah. Tell him Ali Malouf continues to serve him by sending evil ones like you to him for his judgement. I'll do just that, but first I have something planned for you. What is that? Maloof asked from an unseen position in the darkness. You know something I need to know, and I will get that out of you before I'm dispatched to face your bullshit god. Hmm, interesting response, but it changes nothing. The reality of your demise is still at hand. You'd best prepare. Allah's will <laughs> sorry, all- The reality of your demise is still at hand. <laughs> Fuck me. Allah's will always prevails. <laughs> John got a make on where the Islamic terrorist was standing, and he moved on him like a ghost before he could wield his blade once more. John took Ali's arm as he swept his foot, throwing him to the ground. He snarled, And now, my hateful friend, I will introduce you to some of the desert's friendly denizens. Ali Malouf was now beginning to get a sense of the doom that awaited him in the coming moments. <laughs> John guided him into the darkness, saying, There are snakes all around us. Snakes that dwell in pits during the mating season. <laughs> Fuck snakes as far as the eye can see. I know where one of these pits might be. I heard sounds coming from it as we approached your camp. I'm surprised that you didn't know about this pit. John pushed the Islamist leader along towards a depression in the ground. The snakes were rattling in a chorus of frightening proportions, especially to Ali Malouf. I dropped a pig into that pit just an hour ago. A pig for the reptiles to feast on, commemorating your great festivity, John Lied. Ali's persona was now that of a terrified man. <laughs> You mean Ali was now terrified? You want to be with Allah, no? John asked. Yes, of, of course, but not yet. What do I do? What can I do? He was starting to plead. Facing his death was turning his spine to liquid. Again, I'm sorry, but no. John is, is fearless. He doesn't fear death. But this guy who's literally an Islamic fundamentalist <laughs> who spent his life at war with America is a religious fanatic who believes that when he dies, he will go immediately to heaven and be with God. He's just going to break down and start crying and begging and it's like, no, no, just, no. Like, they have to be fundamentalist zealots who are inhuman monsters who will blow themselves up. Who also up. don't even really believe Who are yeah. also cowards and yeah. pathetic and weak. The leftists are all pathetic SJWs yeah. who can't even fight back. And, and they're anti and they're super, anti -super soldiers, soldiers yeah. who are threatening the world and they're going to destroy us all and I'm going to cry about it. <laughs> Here's my offer. Go ahead, please. Go ahead. They had reached the snake pit and the sound of the reptiles was loud and overwhelming. I can't believe this is how it's going to be. He's going to stick a jab his head into a pit of fucking snakes. Literally. Fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. snakes. I will let you live and watch you walk away into the night and go wherever you want to go. What do I have to do for that? Ali dropped to his knees, looking pleadingly up at John as he waited for the deal. Or I can drop your ass into this here pit where I believe you will die an extraordinarily harsh and painful death. <laughs> Ali Malouf was turning into liquid at the thought. John continued. I think the pig lasted a while, even with all the bites it took. You know, these snakes don't like to be interrupted when they're getting some. Funny how that goes. I'd hate to see what they're gonna do with another interruption. Okay, okay. What is it you want from me? Money? I got lots of money. Women? I got lots of women. Because I got lots of money. Hashi? I got lots of that too. Yeah, that's what you want. Sure. Yeah, go on. <laughs> give me half ounce of hash and I'll let you go. Like, what the f no, what I want from you is this. Where are the attacks going to be? Where are they going to be? What are they going to be? Let me go. You can't stop this. If it could be stopped, I would do it. I would do it. I would do it. He kept repeating. John doubled down on it. Where are the attacks going to happen? 
Nah, tell me now. Nah. <laughs> oh, you'll be snake bit in just a few minutes, and I'll stand back and watch you die. I can't tell you that. I don't know what you're talking about. The cowering terrorist moaned. <laughs> okay, say hello to a laugh from me. John held him up by the collar and started to push him into the pit as Ali jerked backwards, screaming. The snakes were intertwined in massive rope-like groups, rattles blazing like waves of cicadas coming at them with the overpowering sound of their collective song. Is that, I'm sorry, is that snake porn? <laughs> yes. Ali dug his feet into the ground and started to push himself away from the slithering mass in front of him. As he did so, one foot slipped, throwing his leg forward. Instantly, he was struck by two angry snakes <laughs> on the same leg. He screamed as John yanked him back from the frenzied den. Look! Look at what you've done. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. The pain is unbelievable. It's very bad. Do something, <laughs> Ellie. It's very bad. <laughs> it really hurts. I think I'm gonna die. No, you're not. You're gonna make it. I'll get help. Kill me. Oh, Jesus, Larry, don't do this to me. I beg you. It really hurts. I can stop your leg from rotting off, but you've got to give me what I want, John said, <laughs> almost in a whisper. I can't. I can't, he muttered. Okay, then. I'll just have to leave you here. Notche came up behind John and saw what was happening. Snake, he asked. Two snakes. He won't last long without anti-venom, Notche said stoically, as you really should have expected by now. Yeah. <laughs> Ali looked up at him, pleadingly, screaming for help, trying to push himself away from the frenzied snakes. I'll go and find Jerry. He's got some in his pack, Notche turned and started running back to the encampment. No need to. He's a goner. John turned away toward the clamour of what was left of the battle. No, Ali shouted. No! <laughs> John had just started on his way when Ali grabbed him by the ankle. Treat your virgins well when you see them, asshole! The big lawman <laughs> stepped out of his grip. <laughs> God. I'll tell you, please do something. It will begin on the strip in Las Vegas, Ali said quickly. Please, give me something for the bites, the jihadist begged. I can't think clearly. I need to stop the pain. Get Jerry over here quick, John dragged Ali back toward the encampment as Noche broke into a dead run toward it. He returned, still running, with one of his Shadow Wolf brothers, <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry. The anti-venom was administered quickly as Ali's eyes went back and forth between Jerry, who was injecting the life-saving medicine, and John and Notche. Fright filled his face. Talk to me, John said as he knelt down next to him. Ali gave him the entire plan. John took the marshal's phone and hit the number last dial by car. The Native American lawman told everything he had learned from Ali Maloof. The information went up the line to those trusted by U.S. Marshal Eric Khan. It was now up to them to do what they could without going through the normal process of dealing with thwarting a terror attack on America. American soil because that process could no longer be trusted. <laughs> they would have to find another way. A few days later, the Arizona desert sky was full of color as the sun set and the spirit of the night began to stir. The clouds, a brilliant orange, were hanging on the horizon with sun rays lighting them from the bottom up as the daylight crept behind the mountains off in the distance, but not too far from where a man named John Gooday was standing. He was fully aware of a man standing behind him about 80 feet away in the desert foliage. <laughs> so we finally yeah, turned yeah. to the opening. At first, that man seemed to be taking photos of the evening desert that lay some 30 miles south of Phoenix and less than 10 seconds from Washington, D.C. He could hear what sounded like clicking behind him as the sound rode the desert air to his animal-like ears. We shall have the whole chapter twice. I don't, don't think we've ever had that before. No. A book with so much filler that yeah, just repeat the whole chapter. <laughs> Fuck it, oh man. There were others who would join the man. The one with the camera device used hand signals to communicate with them. He could hear the hand signals. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As he chanted, a shadowy wolf slowly approached him out of the encroaching darkness, kissed his forehead, and stood there for a moment, watching him. After a moment, the animal turned and looked at the men who had stopped dead in their tracks as they approached from behind. He then slowly turned his glance back to the kneeling Native American, kissed his forehead again before disappearing back into the shadows. At at that point, John heard movement coming from what sounded like three men. They spread out, moving swiftly without making a sound, closing in from different directions on the place where they last saw him. John's first thoughts were that they were sent by one of the drug cartels to take him out because of his success with intercepting this. Why, after everything that's happened, would that have been his first thought? <laughs> like, he's just, days after yeah. he's cleared up the whole deep yeah. state territory, why? 
would he think that? It, oh, it's probably unrelated to all that. It's probably to do with yeah. months before something to do with a cartel. Surely you would rewrite this yeah. opening chapter ju- even just slightly. Yeah. But they just completely copied it in. After a short time, the night sounds of the desert and his spirit wolf helped him to know they were gone. I thought that we'd gotten them all. But maybe I was wrong. Never underestimate the deep state, was John's lingering thought. <laughs> so it doesn't even like give a conclusion to that, it's just the yep. same thing again and it ends There's not like, even any extra level. Yeah, I thought there'd the be end. extra where yeah. he like, he fucked them up or something, you know? Yeah, I mean, I at least assumed that there would be some little mm. extra added bit at the end there. I love that as well, the way so many of them do, where they just end the story with, like, a similar line that they started with. Yeah. <laughs> They've taken it to a whole yeah. new level, <laughs> where they literally just chapter. copy and pasted the first chapter at the end, because they thought it would be clever. Although, I have some great news. There's an epilogue. Epilogue. Our president under siege. <laughs> Our president under siege. Our values under yeah. attack. <laughs> under siege. Under siege, exactly, yeah, fucking hell. Our president under siege too. Yeah. <laughs> the radioactive material never arrived at the dumpster on the reservation in Arizona, but the explosives were detonated and killed 20 people who were working on the grounds, along with several guests in the casino hotel. Jimmy and Sweet Tooth's mother was not one of them. Well, it's lucky they did nothing to prevent the bombing of the... That's what, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. What? Oh, as long as they're all right, fuck everyone else. What like, 20 fuck? people were killed. <laughs> they I'm knew sorry. the bombs. They knew the bombs. What? They stopped the other bombs. They stopped the, the fucking, you know, Brooklyn and the Grand Canyon, right? Well... <laughs> um, um, it's funny you should say that. Yeah. <laughs> an attack on the Las Vegas Strip was met by an anti-terrorist SWAT team. Two officers were killed, three civilians died. All 12 terrorists were killed on that boulevard. The glass bridge of the Grand Canyon was no more. It was blown up by a team of radical Islamists who escaped after successfully firing handheld rockets into it. <laughs> The Mall of America witnessed a huge explosion in the parking area just outside one of the main entrances as a truck was surrounded by law enforcement. A lone terrorist detonated the vehicle, killing himself and wounding four police officers. On Wall Street, a suicide bomber detonated an explosive vest on the trading floor as the closing bell rang, killing 35 people and sending the financial infrastructure of the United States into a tailspin that it would not recover from for several years. (laughs) Well, it wasn't all bad. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, that's good. That's nice. But I mean, it does, like, it renders kind of the whole story <laughs> kind of absolutely pointless at this point, doesn't yeah. it? So, so they caught the guys and they did this and yeah. then, then it just all happened anyway. Yeah. Well, that's the deep state, Joe. Yeah, no, I, I get it. The point of the story is can't win, don't try. Yeah. Good, that <laughs> The is. point of the story is cops can't help you. <laughs> so don't fucking ask them to. Cops can't help you, even if they try. Yeah. <laughs> Which they won't. Which they won't. <laughs> Just off Red Hook in Brooklyn, New York, a powerboat was blown out of the water by a Coast Guard cutter <laughs> as it failed to stop on their command as it made its way towards the Statue of Liberty. Well, at Fire... least the Statue of Liberty's alright. That's yeah. the main thing. Yeah, that paragon of border control, racism yeah. and fascism. All five aboard the power boat were killed. A truck, which had been parked on Catman Plaza in Brooklyn, New York, rolled onto the Brooklyn Bridge, where it stopped suddenly. Two men fled the truck on a motor scooter that had been stored in the back of it. The bridge was severely damaged by the explosives in the truck. But it was not brought down. Richard Penelope, special counsel, was placed under arrest and charged with high treason. Mandrell went unidentified and disappeared. I'm sorry. Do we? Oh, are we supposed? Am I supposed to remember Richard Penelope? No, no. no I, uh, all right. Okay. Good. So that's the big yeah. climax, is it? Uh, the two unnamed yeah. character gets, gets arrested. arrested. It was mentioned earlier on that the special counsel. It was they said like the president and his special counsel were. That's in right. They of never mentioned yeah, his name. Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah. Yeah. It does take a bit of the fucking sting out of it. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, yeah. Boot, what, like maybe boot. have him uh, like appear at least once. Yeah. James Malcolm Isbister <laughs> flared. <Yeah. laughs> Just vanished into yeah. thin air one night. Live on television. Yeah. <laughs> The former POTUS was in full disaster mode, leading an effort to discredit and drive his successor from office, fully funded by a multi Does that remind you of anyone? (laughs) I'm sorry, oh, that's the left, is it? Yeah. Fucking unbelievable. The fash are just so 
fucking full of They're shit. They're such man. fucking cry babies. Yeah, yeah. Fully funded by a multi billionaire outside the country, rioters were being recruited and paid by this cabal and were waging war against the Constitution and the will of the American people. John Nantan Goodet was appointed as the first Native American United States Marshal. <laughs> I was going to say president. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I thought he was going to get made president. <laughs> the first Native American United States Marshal for the Federal District of Arizona. Like, does that not tell you? Like, this bullshit with the fucking Native Americans and the shit. Like, yeah. they've had to invent a situation in which a fictional yeah. character gets yeah. made the first yeah. Native American so, Marshal. So, there's never been a Native Fuck American me. Marshal in the state of Arizona. Yeah. Which just goes to show how not racist America is. Yeah. His appointment was intended as a mechanism by those in the swamp to control his actions. To say, that didn't work would be an understatement of immense proportions. Finally, there was a feeling of tremendous change that began sweeping across the land as a new president was sworn into office and was immediately set upon by the deep state and those left behind from the previous administration. But he was stronger and smarter and far more adept than any of them had ever imagined. Can we guess who this is for? <laughs> The actual crybaby who's still crying about it, even though he's still crying about it yeah. now. But no, he's too tough, too yeah. strong, too he smart. He will not be cowed by the deep... St he's out, he's voted out, he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> <Oopsie>. <laughs> the end of the beginning. <laughs> oh my god! That's the equivalent of the end, question mark. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Steven Seagal. <laughs> oh, you fucking cunt. You rapist bastard. <laughs> what leaves me confused? I mean, other than <laughs> everything else. Oh, I, love <laughs> <laughs> I love that there's a glossary and yet it doesn't actually tell yeah. you anything. FBI stands for Federal Bureau of Investigation. It stands for Fuck Boys International. <laughs> But they're at the end of the beginning. Right, so yeah. that obviously heavily implies, oh, as, yeah. as does really the ending yeah, of the yeah. book, that this is part one of a, a trilogy or a, a series of this, yeah. you know. Okay, yeah, he's a marshal now on that, but in terms of, like, what, where do you really go from here? Like, I don't... Well, like, they've got to do the QAnon stuff. They've got to. They've got to do the, the, the sex trafficking paedophile stuff. Of course, because this is this the whole plot of this is yeah. the caravans coming in. Yeah, exactly. The, that's what this is, isn't yeah. it? The, the Mexicans they're not sending their bears. That's 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 yeah, this, isn't it? That ends yeah. with Trump winning. Sorry, I know I should have like totally. <laughs> Got that, but it's it's such a confused muddle of bullshit. And I've just realised that no, this is the caravan at the borders, yeah. all of this stuff. And so yeah, the next one It's gotta be, innit? Oh. It's gotta be QAnon, full Q. He gets contacted by someone within the deep state. Oh that tells him what they're really doing. Well, here is to part two of Steven Seagal's wonderful book series. His opus. His op yeah. Here's to part two. Here's to Q. And indeed. Here's to you. Dame dame, dame yo, dame ne do yo. Anta na, suki de, suki sugi te. Dore da ke, suyoi o sake de mo yuganai omoi. The strange thing is, I don't really have that much to say about it now that we're finished. Yeah, I mean, because honestly, I think it, I feel it like really we, speaks for itself. Yeah, it speaks for itself. I feel we've said, we've said really lot, all yeah. there is to say. Like, we were so fired up. Yeah. We basically read this in just what is essentially one continuous read. -through. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, um, it's certainly record time for us to, to yeah, read a book. Yeah, the fact is, yeah, I think it's pretty obvious. Incredibly racist. Yes. Um, definitely misogynist. 
that Not kind of as took much a, as you might yeah, think. Yeah, I, I, I figured it would go There was, away, There were no sex was, scenes. Yeah, like, I figured she would get killed. She didn't. Yeah, uh, uh, there, there is There was that. a lot of condescending yes. bullshit patronising. Yeah, yeah. It's, more, it's more the attitude of yeah, misogyny exactly. than, than any sort of physical thing that happened. Yeah, and she was literally justified by her all-encompassing love of the big lawman. Yes. Obviously just unhinged in the extreme, mm. completely self-contradictory, utterly muddled and confused. Yes. A real nasty, spiteful, bigoted piece of shit yes. book. But <laughs> that being said, easily, hands down, the most entertaining book we have ever read on this channel. Absolutely. Hands yeah, hundred percent. Nothing even comes close to it. Like no. Trump Tower was entertaining in its sort yeah. of bizarre weirdness. Yeah. But we made a lot of our own nothing. Fun. <laughs> yes, yeah, actually that's true. Yeah. Whereas this one This it worked. Oh for my this. god, it did, <laughs> yes. It bounced yes. back and yeah. forth. It was account. yeah. It's it's exactly what you would want. Like anyone who knows Steven Seagal other than his just reputation recently, <laughs> like you know, anyone his, who, his who films. remembers his films from back in the day. They're not well made in any way, they're not well written, they're not well acted, they're not well performed in any way but they are some of the most entertaining films like you will be glued to the screen because of how bad it is and how yeah. embarrassing it is yeah well like this book and the other books you've read those movies are very similar they are all about the ego of the of the star yes. or of, yes. of the authors and uh, they are incredibly revealing yes in in all the wrong yeah, ways yeah and i think this book just captures that magic Frankly. Yeah, and I I didn't expect it to. I've never even considered recommending any of the books we've read. But like, if you're gonna read any of the books that we have read, yeah. steal it or buy it secondhand. <laughs> Mug Steven to go. I'm sure he fucking carries copies of it around with him. Yeah. <laughs> That's his business card now. Yeah, he just hands you a copy of that. It immediately goes in the bin. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it was going to be something special, but it surprised even me. I think that all of the other books, even when they were funny at times, you mm. know, parts were ridiculous and that really did look legitimately make us laugh. It's a true allegiance where they start singing Ebony and Ivory exactly. in the school prison. <laughs> None of those other books were able to be equal to the sum of their parts, whereas this one has come closest. Yes. I think the ending was something yeah, of a damp was, squid compared yeah, it to was, where it, it had been before. It kind of died down to prepare for a sequel. Yeah. Um, I think as well the fact like that it, yeah the fact that it's sort of baiting a sequel lets it down a bit. Also, I feel like a lot of Seagal's films, because they're films and because they're a very specific style of film, they would often just end with he kills the bad guy, he grabs the woman, and they start walking away in the credit roll. Yeah, because yeah. that's how those kind of films yeah, tend they're to very end. abrupt. Yo, fuck nuts. Oh, Vic, look over here. Is that a police dog or what? You can't really do that with a book. You have yeah. to kind of round it off some way, and I don't yeah. think they're we used get, to do it. We get the now. ending montage. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, you know, the characters. Yeah freeze frame and it tells us what happened to him. You know, John Gaudet became yeah. first Native American yeah. United States Martian Arizona. Like, it's very... John Gaudet got syphilis and died. Yeah, it's got very... syphilis from kissing wolves and died. Yeah, from fucking snakes. He? <laughs> he got snake syphilis and died. It is. I, I know it's like it sounds like such a mad thing to say and it feels mad, to be honest, to, to, to even believe this, but yeah. it's head and shoulders the best book we've read on this channel. <laughs> yeah. and the, the, the mad thing is, as well, basically all all of the other books have been pretty much more shit than good, or at least my feeling towards them has been more negative than positive. Yeah. And I feel like that gave me a lot more to say about them once we'd finished yeah. reading them. Whereas with this, I feel like it speaks for itself. Yeah. Again, it is bad. It's really badly written, but in the perfect way yeah, exactly. to, to lead to humour. It really does fall into that category of so bad that it's good, yeah. which I cannot really say about any of the other books we've read. They are kind of just bad whereas with this i feel like anyone reading it could get a laugh could out of get it. a yeah. massive laugh out of it and yeah. it, it's very short you can smash yeah, through it in yeah. a day or you two get it, and it's get it done it's pretty quick. very yeah. 
very funny. Yeah, that's the frustrating thing when when you when you get so much enjoyment out of it. You know, you we've kind of said everything there is to say. Yeah. About it. Obviously, it's terrible, awful, horrible. The people that wrote it are terrible. Oh awful yeah. Human beings. Uh, uh, Joe Arpaio, um, actually, I feel that's yeah. that's saying. Oh, that can what be a fucking about. monster! Absolute fucking monster. Piece uh, yeah, of shit. it makes me wonder about this Tom Morrissey fellow. If there's anything uh, to be said about him, because if he's not a rapist, he'd be like the only one of the three. Yeah. That could yeah. To this book that isn't. <laughs> he looks incredibly ghoulish. Yeah, he's I... like a sweaty ghoul. Yeah. Yeah. Like a sweat guy. <laughs> the failings of the others really just comes down to none of them had the balls to be as fucking out yeah. of their minds as this one is. So, yeah, I suppose just to talk about the specifics of the book at the risk of repeating ourselves, I suppose it bears uh, examining, obviously, the kind of racism that was in this book. Obviously, there was the general racism of uh, anti-Muslim sentiment yes. as the anti immigration yeah. and the Mexican South American whoever basically mm. but then there was the utterly bizarre yes. take on Native Americans the obvious tropes that were used the magic mystic powers attributed to them quite bizarre which I don't think we've seen anything I was gonna quite say, yeah. like that in any of the we've, others we've never covered a book that has that kind of race <laughs> yeah I don't it's, think so oh they're actually special and magic and obviously the whole Japanophile thing yeah. you know Aikido is special because yeah. it's magic it, yeah it's, it's Japanese people are magic and, and yeah. Native American people are magic yeah. and anyone that I claim to be is magic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. not surprising to come from him and again it's this very nebulous version of Native Americans yeah. because because well, he, he clearly hasn't he done any actual research. He has the guy be both mobile. No, and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 the and then the Apache side mental. of it seems to just it's gone. fall away because he forgot that he said it. Yeah, the whole approach there just gives this book such a unique vibe. Mm. The absolute contradictory way that it treats law enforcement and government. I essentially... hate the deep state and I hate tyranny, but I love the police and yeah, the military. They're the only like... way to... To beat them. Yeah, it's like what what instrument? Let's say, for example, there is a deep state. Because in a way, there is. Yeah. And as you say, it's the military industrial complex. Yeah. What instrument would the deep state use <laughs> in order to implement its yeah. tyranny? And to pacify the and to, public. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's going to be the military yeah. and the police force, yeah. right? No. No, they're heroes. Yeah. What I find fucking funny with these people as well, who love the military, love the police force, they can never seem to muster the same energy for loving, say... Doctors, nurses, yeah. firefighters. It's only the violence, it's only the ones with guns yeah, that yeah. kill people that they <laughs> yeah. love. They, yeah. Nurses can fuck off, doctors can, firefighters can yeah. fuck off. Well, it's because there's no charm offensive on behalf of doctors and teachers. Yeah. It's because, marketing. It's because yeah, doctors because and teachers don't have marketing fucking. Yeah. Precisely campaigns. because those professions do not implement violence. The police need. Yes marketing and PR yeah. to protect them yeah. from the consequences of their actions. Without the fiction that surrounds them, no one would like them because we'd all see them for what they were. Again, like we said when we read the preface slash forward sections. There are both in this book. Yeah. <laughs> There's a preface <laughs> Somehow and they, a forward. They managed to fit both. I think they have a forward and then a preface, actually. I, yeah. I, I, don't, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it matters. but yeah, There are rules to these. Yeah, I I've never seen that before. No. This contradiction at the heart where, you know, essentially what they're saying is the state is completely compromised. Put all of your faith in these arms of the state. <laughs> yeah. They can't quite break their conditioning and say, yeah, the, it's because the police are bad and don't mm. trust the police. They have to cling to this idea that, of the good cops. Mm. Because, of course, fundamentally, even though they are now also getting battered by mm. the police as they grow increasingly emboldened, increasingly violent in a more public way, mm. they even then don't actually have a problem with police violence and state violence yeah. in the way it's, that leftists yeah. so It's do. only when it's happening to it's, them yeah, specifically. It, exactly. <laughs> the problem that they actually have is that they did it to me mm. and yeah. they weren't doing it to black yeah. people. Well, you hear them literally say yes, that, don't yes. you? They're not supposed to do yeah. it to us. They're supposed the to do it. Yeah, they're the supposed yeah. to do it to you. Yeah. It's why their solving of their imagined fascism mm. is fascism. Like we said all the way back at the beginning when we read their little fucking <laughs> screed at the beginning. They see the problems yes. in yeah. inequality and in systems and governments led by this conspiracy yeah. of bankers and politicians and religious figures yeah. and police <laughs> and national security <laughs> and military. They see that danger comes from that. But we see that as a problem full stop. Yes. They see 
here as a tool that ought to be used to maintain yes. their power. And the only problem they have it's, is it's, yeah. that it might be used against them. They don't want Trump because he's going to make America great. What they mean is he's going to fuck you over yes. and they're for, I'll do better out of it because yes, I'm getting it. your share because yes. you're losing your share. What yes. they don't seem to realise is that no, you're not getting my no. share. Donald Trump is yes, getting exactly. my share and you're getting yes. nothing. Maybe if rather than writing books decrying Mexicans and Muslims, we were to unite with Mexicans and Muslims, we could actually affect change. No, no, no. The wedge must stand and we will remain divided and we'll bicker amongst ourselves and all the while we're doing that, the people who actually rule the world and different countries, they just carry on with business as usual because it doesn't matter to them that we're fucking killing each other in the streets or whatever the fuck it is we're doing yep. they don't care they will find a way to make money out of that yep. in terms of uh, back to the book again um, in terms of uh, writing and construction as you've seen this book is utterly <laughs> incomprehensible at times there are literally sentences that do yeah. not make sense Wait. would the answers to the proceeding be in some way answered like what a <laughs> sentence do you know what I mean it's like what obviously we have this sort of general vision of the world as it ought to be in a sense mm. through, the, through the way that's depicted uh, how it shouldn't be you know women loving their man and doing as they're told and basically just following in his footsteps we have his mum getting battered and kidnapped and his girlfriend who just does whatever he says yeah. because, she, because she just loves him so yeah. much I was so sure that John was single and lived alone <laughs> but when yeah. he came into his apartment or wherever yeah. his home and Alicia was on the bed I was utterly certain that it was either a flashback or a hallucination and that it was like his ex-wife who, who, who had been murdered by the been yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, that's, I was yeah that's, that's what that I thought it was I, when she came, was on the yeah. bed it didn't even occur to me that this was really happening I mm. thought that he was seeing like you know the, yeah. the ghost of his dead yeah. wife that's honestly what I thought and it took me ages as it was getting into it I'm like oh god she's real <laughs> like and that is in the room yeah, yeah that, that shocked me yeah and then the fact that she basically goes on to just not really play an important role at all yeah. until the very very end where she shoots Bellamy and that seemed like just well someone's got to shoot Bellamy yeah. so it might as well be her yeah and of course she had to be the nursing caring woman yeah, to look yeah. after his dearest mama <laughs> the way that there are literally just about five characters that are identical to each other including the protagonist yeah and <sighs> most of them just vanish from the story yeah yeah, yeah. And obviously just the, the general fantasy of it all. The fact that it is essentially just a fantasy novel mm. in which their darkest bigotries are indulged. Also uh, being that self-insert, like, wish yeah, fulfillment yeah. fantasy While where Seagal's, I'm the big tough guy who blah blah blah, yeah. all the women love him and yeah. he kills everyone yeah. all the time. <laughs> and Seagal's particular weird obsession yes. with Native Americans could be indulged as well. Yeah. Obviously we had the allusions to globalists, which was obviously yeah. Jewish banking conspiracy stuff there was the guy that sounded almost exactly like George Soros oh god yeah it was like Loris Loris wasn't it yeah yeah fucking hell like at the end here all the protests are all actually against the will of the people and they're all bankrupted by foreign multi-billionaires unbelievable yeah sure sure that's 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 what's happening yeah he's such a weird weird man <laughs> and this is such a weird weird book you yeah. Know? yeah what an utterly bizarre unhinged bigoted delusional piece of shit <laughs> um, 10 out of 10 <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> obviously yeah as always the number one message when we read these books and when we make these videos is thank you very much for watching we appreciate it if you've made it this far you've made it all the way to the end thank you so much for joining us on this bizarre journey <laughs> through this weird west version <laughs> of Arizona <laughs> I guess the only other thing to say is that if there are Native American people watching, then just like, sorry if caused yeah. any offence. <laughs> yeah. uh, sorry where, you had to go yeah, through Yeah, whether from the yeah. book itself or from us, you know, mispronouncing or butchering yeah, names yeah, or for that. not understanding culture and things like that. Yeah, and that's on us. We apologise yeah. if, if, if that came through. The last thing we ever want to do with any of our videos is like, offend anyone other than Nazis, really. Yeah, they can go fuck off. They themselves. can fuck off. I hope they're offended. Fuck them. But yeah, anyone who hasn't like done anything wrong, then sorry if we've offended yeah. you. I mean, that'd be an interesting thing. I wonder like what people 
people think is the best or worst books. <laughs> yeah, give us your rank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah let us know. Uh, rank the fucking uh, books we've read. Yeah, because I find it hard to... The True Allegiance, yeah. War, all of the ones you've watched. What was yeah. your favourite and what was your least favourite yeah. of all these books? Because this was definitely number one for us. 100%. The other no ones, question. yeah, they're just, they don't have that magic. They don't, whereas with this, yeah. we've read it in, in three days. Because it pulled us through. It did, yeah, it Mad really did, enough, yeah. Mad enough, as naive yeah. and amateurish yeah. as it is, on some fundamental levels, <laughs> they understood yes. storytelling yeah. in a way that none basically of none have. of the other authors yeah. actually have. Even The Rig Warrior, which was, I'd say, probably the closest to like a yeah. legitimate book, or certainly written by the closest to a legitimate author mm. that we've had. Closest, I'm not saying Arguably. Is, <laughs> arguably, yeah, yeah. But the bit, Boris Johnson's not an author. Yeah. Ben Shapiro's not an author. Mm. Steven Seagal and Tom Morrissey are not authors. William Johnstone, he's a very bad author. He's a hat. <laughs> but he did do it a lot. But, yeah. So he had it, some he, credentials. <laughs> I imagine he got better as he went. <laughs> I don't imagine that at all. <laughs> <laughs> the ideology is what made it confusing and, and bewildering and bizarre. Yeah, that is one thing I would say. Yeah, I'm, I am fairly shocked by how by the numbers it was. Mm. To the point where they spent a lot of time just kind of standing around saying the same shit. <laughs> yeah. and I, was quite, I figured it would be more explosive. Like, yeah. I was hoping for a, you know, a die-hard ending. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, we didn't quite get that. But, you know, we'll save that for the sequel. I can't wait. <laughs> what a cover as well, though. Yeah. What a cover. I mean, what a cover. <laughs> Truly a work of art. <laughs> Within is, and without. Yeah, Much does, like the man who wrote it. <laughs> it does deliver on the cover, I'll give it that. Yeah. You look at that cover and you think, oh my god, this is like the shittest, maddest thing I've ever seen in my life. And then you read the book and it's like... Yeah. <laughs> Bang. So, uh, yeah, I think we've uh, said about all there is to say. Thanks for joining us. Mm. We hope you enjoyed this uh, journey through the uh, arid, jihadist-filled deserts of Arizona <laughs> uh, on our way to understand the deep teachings of Sensei Segal and mm. his shadow wolves. If you liked the video, please like it. Leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't. Ring a bell. Yep. <laughs> Apparently that does something. We have a Patreon now. Check uh -huh. out the Patreon if you want to give us your hard-earned money. So Definitely we, give us your money. We can yep. do that. So that we can continue well, reading awesome. shit garbage like this. <laughs> <laughs> we need to eat as well. We need to keep yeah. the lights on. So, you know, if you could donate anything on Patreon... That would be fucking wonderful. Really do appreciate all of the support we've got, yep. um, all the comments, everything. So, yeah, I guess thank you all is, is the only thing left to say. And I guess, you know, do yourself a favour, get cracking on Steven Seagal's filmography, because it really is worth it. What kind of babbling bullshit is this? Well, thank you fine folks for watching, and do make sure to join us next time when we will be reading something that is somehow even more insane than this <laughs> piece of shit. Be a bad guy. Be a nice guy.